Israel, a nation often distant from peace, may never truly know its embrace. Strategic air bases like Nevada, teeming with F-35 stealth fighters valued in the hundreds of millions became prime targets for precise strikes. High value locations such as the Hatserm Air Base in the Negev Desert and the Mossad headquarters in Tel Aviv were also not spared from this Iranian onslaught. At the core of this unprecedented assault were the hypersonic Fatah missiles and the Shahab 3. But how could Israel's state-of-the-art Aero 3 missile defense system, along with its multi-layered air defense shield, fail to intercept them? Don't worry, we'll break it all down for you. According to intelligence reports, the U.S. tracked the origins of the missile launches to a valley in southern Shiraz, Iran, marking what is considered the most significant Iranian offensive against Israel to date. A staggering 180 missiles were launched, traveling over 1,600 kilometers, traversing mountains and deserts before reaching their targets. The Shahab-3, a cornerstone of Iran's ballistic missile program, was one of the key players in this attack. This liquid-fueled, medium-range missile can carry a warhead between 760 to 1,000 kilograms. Though based on North Korean technology, it has been adapted and enhanced by Iranian engineers to increase both its range and accuracy. Here's how it works initially. The missile is positioned vertically at 90 degrees before launch, optimizing its initial trajectory towards space. Once launched, it exits Earth's atmosphere, where air resistance is minimal, allowing it to achieve greater speeds. Upon reaching the desired altitude, the warhead separates from the missile's main body and begins its descent back to Earth, often at hypersonic speeds and sometimes maneuvering to evade defenses. However, the Shahab-3 wasn't the only missile that struck Israeli soil. The Fatah-2, Iran's latest missile technology, equipped with a hypersonic glide vehicle, also made its mark. This missile can maneuver at speeds between Mach 5 and Mach 10. Though its range is 1,500 kilometers, its ability to evade defense systems makes it especially menacing. What sets the Fatah-2 apart from other ballistic missiles is its capability to accelerate beyond the atmosphere and then re-enter it to avoid interception by Israel's famed exo-atmospheric defense system, the Aero-3. Moreover, its aerodynamic control surfaces enable it to alter its course mid-flight, significantly complicating detection and interception efforts. Hypersonic missiles represent a relatively new and profoundly challenging technology due to their blistering speeds. To grasp their impact, consider that if Russia were to launch such a missile, it could reach the U.S. in just 18 minutes. China, with its development of the Dongfeng-17, has also joined the exclusive club of nations with this technology. Their hypersonic glide vehicle has become one of the first to enter mass production, capable of carrying both conventional and nuclear warheads, transforming it into a nightmare for missile defense systems, particularly for the U.S. Navy. It's no secret that China has built life-size replicas of American aircraft carriers in the Taklamakan Desert to practice targeting them. Meanwhile, the U.S., though not as advanced, has also developed the AGM-183 ARRW, an air-launched hypersonic missile. Upon deployment, it sheds its casing and relies solely on the kinetic energy of its glide vehicle to strike its target, meaning it doesn't carry any explosive payload. The U.S. claims this approach maximizes speed and reduces the chances of detection. And of course, we can't forget Russia, which has revealed its hand with the feared Kinzhal missile, reportedly tested in Ukraine and reaching astounding speeds of Mach 10. For a missile to be classified as hypersonic, it must meet three essential criteria speeds of Mach 5 or above in flight maneuverability and surgical precision. However, before delving into how Iran's missiles managed to bypass Israel's air defenses, it's crucial to understand the Aero 3, the missile shield Israel has placed its trust in. This system comprises three key elements, the missile launcher, the Green Pine radar, and the Aero missile. The launcher, a colossal structure mounted on the back of a two-axle trailer, is equipped with six missile tubes. These tubes house missiles ready to be launched within seconds, with the fully loaded launcher weighing in at a staggering 35 tons. The Green Pine radar is the system's vigilant eye, scanning the horizon for incoming threats. This advanced radar not only detects ballistic missiles at great distances, but also calculates their trajectory and speed, feeding critical data to the fire control system. Now let's dive into the Aero 3 missile itself. This missile operates in two stages, at its core lies the rocket's solid propellant motors. These motors utilize a meticulously formulated blend of fuel and oxidizer known as solid propellant housed in a robust casing. This mixture generates the energy needed to propel the missile beyond Earth's atmosphere. At the top of the rocket is the ignition chamber, where a chemical reaction is triggered, releasing hot gases at high pressure, propelling the missile at incredible speeds. To give you an idea, 
the heat generated is enough to melt steel, but thanks to advanced materials and cooling systems, the missile maintains its structural integrity. Moving towards the missile's nose, we encounter the interceptor vehicle, the brain of the operation. This component is divided into three main sections first. The propulsion system, equipped with a thrust vectoring nozzle, allowing the missile to adjust its course mid-flight, providing the maneuverability needed to intercept hypersonic targets. Second, the warhead. Contrary to what one might imagine, the Aero 3 doesn't employ a conventional explosive warhead. Instead, it relies on kinetic impact, destroying its target through a direct collision at extreme speed. However, in some models, a precision explosive charge weighing around 150 kilograms is included, designed to fragment and increase the likelihood of neutralizing the threat. Third, the Seeker. Equipped with infrared sensors and advanced guidance systems, the Seeker detects and tracks targets in space, adjusting its trajectory in real time and distinguishing between decoys and the actual target. One of the standout strengths of the Aero 3 missile defense system is its ability to correct for detection inaccuracies. Imagine the radar detects an incoming threat but cannot pinpoint its exact location. In such cases, the Aero 3 interceptor adjusts its course mid-flight, enhancing the chances of neutralizing the target. This becomes crucial when dealing with intercontinental ballistic missiles traveling at hypersonic speeds. If the interceptor fails to recalibrate based on more precise data from its advanced sensors, the result could be a catastrophic failure. However, the Aero 3 was just the first layer of defense against Iran's attacks and was expected to be the most effective, but Israel also has two other layers of defense. The second is David Sling, designed to intercept medium-range missiles and drones. The third layer is the famous Iron Dome, known for intercepting most short-range rockets launched toward Israel, with a range of approximately 65 kilometers. Yet, despite all this cutting-edge technology, Iranian missiles penetrated every layer of defense. How is that possible? According to reports, Iran launched 180 ballistic missiles, some of which were possibly hypersonic, as claimed by Iran's Revolutionary Guard. Although the Aero system successfully intercepted many of these missiles before they reached Israeli airspace, several managed to evade defenses. The main issue lies in the nature of the glide vehicles, like those used by the Fata 2 missiles. Once separated from the launcher, these vehicles can perform unpredictable maneuvers, altering their trajectory multiple times during flight. This evasion capability confuses radar systems and interceptors, which are designed to counter missiles with more predictable flight paths. Neither David's sling nor the Iron Dome is prepared to deal with highly maneuverable hypersonic missiles. As a result, the interceptors failed to hit their targets, and some missiles struck critical military bases housing F-35 jets, each valued at over $100 million. A single day of conflict on this scale has massive economic implications. It's estimated that Iran spent over $200 million launching ballistic missiles and drones, while Israel's defense efforts cost nearly $1 billion. Each Aero missile costs around $2.5 million, each David Sling missile approximately $1 million, and each Iron Dome interceptor between $20,000 and $100,000. In contrast, Iranian missiles are estimated to cost around $10,000 to $100,000 each, with drones ranging from $2,000 to $50,000. Given this stark disparity, Israel is investing heavily in new defense systems, including the Iron Beam, a laser defense system with interception costs of just $3.50 per shot. 